That's two down with one to go, folks. And while both Woody and Wolfgang have given us plenty to talk about, it could be possible that the final third of this guild tree is actually the best yet. Did Beardo fumble the ball in the big release and miss out on all the flora fun? Hmm, maybe. As I feel it's up for debate. But I will say this, the plant boy is now closer than ever to their lunar roots, and that's a plus. With two branches dedicated to knowing and preserving the growths alongside a plethora of moon-related affinities, the fun flower deserved a full breakdown at the very least, so let's get to it. And we'll go in order of the skills to keep us on track, otherwise we're gonna be all over the place. Something that butterflies will no longer be seen doing as they can now be made quote-unquote neutral for any purposes you desire, be them nefarious or otherwise. But while all right skill trees will begin the exact same, here's where things start to branch. Mushrooms and transmutations. Now personally, I am a huge fan of the former web of skills as it leads to dropping a mushroom plant growth time from 7 minutes and 30 seconds to a mere 5 minutes overall, but not only that though, if selected, we will also be able to grow 6 total mushrooms in planters instead of the typical 4, which also just so happens to, potentially mind, still produce some mushroom spores once said planters fully grow, and that is a huge bonus. Yup, I missed that the other day, so make notes. To continue though, moon shrooms in particular may not be able to grow themselves sadly, however, they can be consumed by wormwood to spawn knapsack-like spore clouds that will render most anything asleep for 20 seconds, which is nothing to ignore even if it is gimmicky. But speaking of gimmicks, our newest one comes from the syrup of Ipecaca here that can be eaten by survivors for whatever reason, resulting in nothing but a tummy ache for them. But that's not too dissimilar to what both Pigman and Beefalo were experienced, sure. However, they will also give us poop while they're at it. Every six seconds, they will take a bit of damage and be forced to give us three to four pieces of crap. Literally, so do with this as you please. But as we head down the other side of the tree, I find myself literally disappointed and confused as I cannot believe that some of these plant crafts only give us one each. Now the lunar saplings and monkey tails make a bit of sense in that regard, although no one in their right mind should even consider the latter at all, but a single berry bush costing 10 health, 3 rot, and 25 juicy berries is ridiculous. Yeah, no. At least the juicy berries themselves only cost 8 rot regular berries at the end of the day. Oh, no, no, no. The only one I would even come close to using would be this alert plant guy. So it sucks that it's at the end of the tree, am I right? Not at the very end, mind, as that belongs to the affinities, of course. Affinities that, very much unlike Wolfgang, need to be unlocked by choosing enough right or left side perks first. But in sticking to the right comes the bright shade tweaks that see special brambles in trapping and damaging any attackers while Wormwood is decked out in the stuff, and tunneling vines potentially spawning the whip our targets for nearly 80 damage each. Do note too though, that these vines spawn with all bright shade tools and weapons, minus the staff. Have fun, as that is where the fun actually ends, at least in my opinion. For you see, a Wormwood's left skill tree is all about farming, and I gotta be honest, Wormwood was already too good at farming, so I see a lot of this as wasted potential. I'll start with the highlights, however, as being able to identify crops before they even reach their very first growth cycle is actually pretty game-changing, and faster and longer bloom states should always be welcomed. Now, the former of the blooming mechanics isn't anything too crazy as for the time being, bloom stages appear to hit every 6 minutes over their typical 8, so I'd maybe buff that clay, but the fact that bloom will last for roughly a day and a half or longer beyond its usual 3 day period is pretty solid as things stand, so take advantage for sure. But of what you ask? Yeah, great question, as this is where I myself start to question the other skills, like the additional summer insulation here. To be fair, it is probably broken, as things are absolutely literally identical when they aren't supposed to be. But even still, most people won't ever experience bloom in summer, so what's the point? And then you got a flower petal generation skill that places one flower petal in Wormwood's inventory every 15 seconds, but only when at a full bloom state, which could easily just be a base kit thing itself, especially when Wormwood can't even use the dang things until they rot. And finally, we've got the extended tending of crops, which is also just so worthless. Yes, it works very well 
well as advertised and will automatically tend to a crap ton of planted seeds at range compared to the usual bloom there, but can we seriously not just walk like two more inches or just run straight through the damn thing and do all of this the exact same way without a perk slot taking away what little fun these skills actually have? I mean, come on now. Even the Killer B perk is more enticing than the crop tending perk, and I don't even like the Killer B perk all that much. But hey, if you don't want to be disturbed unless you do the disturbing, then have at it, folks. But you know what else you can have? My head. Because I also dislike this next skill as well, so I didn't even bother trying to figure it out all that much. Apparently, we can choose to save our crops and farm soils from fruit flies at the cost of potentially spawning the Lord of the Fruit Flies earlier and more often than normal, but who the bloody heck cares about that? The the only way we're even seeing fruit flies is via giant rotten crops or the lord himself and in both those cases we can just outright kill the flies and all's fine yep dumb and another waste of an insight point for sure but to truly wrap up the day come the other affinity skills that might look and sound awesome on paper however i'm warning you now that only one means anything really at the cost of appropriate resources and some health of course so wormwood can now call down care rats that will last roughly three days while following us around all around the world picking up loot mostly small resources and foodstuffs though mind the salad manders that generate to last for two days will also follow wormwood wherever they go, we'll actually fight for them as well, but we'll always be ripe, therefore fires are always going to be present. Something that Wormwood players are actually meant to be avoiding, of course, but it seems like Clay forgot that. But lastly, any and all bulbous light bugs created last but one day, however they will continuously orbit us no matter what, and can even create further orbits the more we make. Now this, this could be useful, especially with certain synergies, say, like with war talks or something. Then again, a single trip to the grotto accomplishes this and more, so whoopsie? Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Wormwood myself, to be quite honest, and that's a shame because I actually consider the guy to be one of my favorites in the entire game. There are just some really unique and potentially game-altering things mixed in with absolutely worthless buffs to pre-existing kits and otherwise ignorable nonsense that actually goes against what Wormwood is supposed to be. I don't know. I think Clay needs to go back to the drawing board on that left tree everybody but thanks for watching well wishes to all i anticipate many hot fixes soon so be sure to keep an eye on that and i'll see you in the next one bye bye